come see me on tour. Just announced a bunch of new tour dates, um, but I still have some remaining 2024 tour dates that were rocking and rolling. Denver, December 4th. Uh, it's sold out, which I'm going to get to my emotions on that momentarily, but uh, we added a show same night, Wednesday, December 4th, 9.45. Those tickets are on sale right now. Dude, can we sell out too? Can we, can we make me cry tears of joy? Let me know. Let's do it. Let's pack it out. And then the next night, I'm in Phoenix and Stand Up Live. That's a big club, man. That thing seats over 500 people. Let's see how many people we can pack in there. Let's do it. Thursday, December 5th. And then I'm going to Zany's Nashville, December 18th. One of the best clubs in the country. I love Nashville. I always have so much fun there. So come out to that show. Let's go. And then it's and then it's Christmas. It's holiday time. And your boy's back at it for 2025. Some of the first cities I'm doing are... Um, Minneapolis, J January 11th at the Cedar Cultural Center, which is a place that does shows, and I've heard it rocks. Great. And then I'm doing a bunch of sh a bunch of Florida shows. Orlando, January 21st. Naples, Florida, January 22nd. That one got added late after the announcement, so I want to make sure you guys know about that. Naples at Off the Hook, which I've been to before and have fun. And then January 23rd, Fort Lauderdale at the Dania Improv. That will also count as my Miami show. So for the Miami and Fort Lauderdale people, that's the show. January 23rd, Dania Improv. And then January 31st to February 1st, Portland, Maine. Never thought I'd go to Maine, but I'm going at the Empire Comedy Club for three shows. Those are the dates. They're all in the description. Um, come out. because, Dude, shows are like selling out now, which is bonkers. So come, uh, come through. It's been really fun, and I'm very happy and very excited. Been way too long, man. Let's do a podcast. Let's go, man. Action. Go. Look at us. We're back. We're back with a pod, and it's it's coming out in a random day. I think for a while I was doing the I was doing the every Wednesday, but now it's like, who cares, dude? Who cares? I'm not doing it every Wednesday, so I may as well drop it whenever I feel like it. And so I'm dropping it on a, on a Friday. We're going up on a Friday. And uh, yeah, man, what's up? It's good to see you guys. It's been a minute. A um, lot has been going on. A lot is happening. A lot of good things. A lot of great things. The vibes are very high. Um, I'm feeling very, very grateful and very excited. Life is good, man. How's life for you? Are you doing okay? Are you freezing yet? Is it cold as shit lately? It's a little cold in LA. I'm bundled up, got some tea with me, being cute. Dude, um, so I want to get into a couple things. I want to get into, um, Kaylee and I went on vacation in Cabo. I want to talk about that, and then we're going to talk about Cleveland, and we're going to talk about Philly. But first, I want to real quick uh, talk about Denver, um, because the show sold out two weeks in advance. Now, a couple things. Uh Denver Comedy Works, I don't know if you guys realize this, that is the that is known in the comedy circles as 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 essentially like it maybe dare I say the best room in the country. And I opened for Bobby Lee there dude like 6 7 years ago now and it was like a huge deal. He I don't know if I've ever fully told the story, but he basically had me open for him without ever seeing me do stand up. He just met me once and liked my vibe, and he knew I worked with Brent Morin and Jason Collings, who he loved, and Brent, unbeknownst to me, like pulled him aside and was basically like, yo, you should take him. He's ready. And so Bobby took me, and I did five shows. I did a half hour before him, sold out every show. It was insane, and I knew how the lore of the club, right? And so I went there, and it, it, it matched my expectations in every way. I was like crushing Three years in a comedy. I wasn't even that good, but I was just like, the room is so good. It was just that magical, right? And ever since then, I've gone, I think, two, one other time, one or two other times opening for Blaustein, but I've never headlined it before. And so when I got the offer for to do it, it was a really big deal. Um, and I've been wanting to go there for a long time, and I feel like I was overdue. So when my agent sent me the offer, it was like, oh. I remember her email, she was like, Denver finally came through. And, you know, leading up to it, the ticket sales have been really good. I think, like, maybe a couple weeks ago. Yeah, actually, it was, like, 10 days ago, I was at, like, 180 tickets. The club seat's 280. And so, at that point, I was like, oh, shit, like, it's looking good. I think I could sell it out. 
but I don't know. And I'll get into kind of the mystery of it. With there was some stuff with Philly and selling out Philly that that factored into my feelings about Denver. I was like, you know, this could happen. We'll see. You know, gonna push hard, really sell it out. That would be a dream come true if I sell it out. And then I get a text two days ago from my agent out of nowhere that says, "Hey, uh, Denver has about thirty tickets left. Um, do you want to add a late show?" Like that. I can't explain the feelings I got from that text message. I was like, I couldn't. I mean, it's like it's not like I can't believe it, but it was such an. I was just so shocked that it was now. You know, I thought it was gonna be kind of down to the wire selling it out, but it was two weeks in advance, and they were like, "Let's add a show." Selling it out was one thing; adding a show was never anything I imagined. And I don't know, man. It was, and then a, a day later, a day later, it sold out officially. And so, I bring this up now. I want to bring this up first, just because it's one of the best feelings I've had, um, you know, in the entertainment industry. You know, I've been doing comedy now for 10 years and I work so hard and I think about my career in stand-up constantly to a fault. Like I'm never not thinking about comedy and it's exhausting. And so just to have a moment of just pure elation and excitement and fulfillment, it was just, it's like people don't understand how fulfilling that feels. At like you're selling out your dream club And then adding a show, it's like, I just couldn't not open with this. I don't know, man. It was just, I'm still processing how just amazing that is. Like, that's some, like, whiteboard, vision board type shit. Like, I I remember I made a list in my phone of, like, my goals. Like, whatever. I think it was, like, my five-year goals. And they went everywhere from, you know, shooting a special to being a guest on this certain podcast to, and I remember one of the things was, like, selling out Comedy Works Denver. And now I get to like cross that off the list. And it's, I don't know, man. I haven't stopped smiling about it. So if you're one of those people that, or if you're any of those people who bought tickets to that show, I just wanted to say thank you. And um, it just means the world to me. So, and um, dude, I, and it's actually good that I brought up doing comedy for 10 years is I've never in my 10 years of doing comedy, I've never taken a real vacation. I've had little excursions you know excursions where I've I've maybe done a set you know it's like I had a vacation but then still did a set somewhere um went to see family still did comedy somehow or Kaylee and I would go to go to Big Bear or Joshua Tree for like a night or two as like a getaway and that counts to me it's not like I'm doing sets in Big Bear who am I going to perform for the fucking squirrels and bears like it's goddamn jungle book it'd be fun but I didn't really do that and I've never just taken a vacation where I just unplug and I just relax and don't think about my career and put my phone away and we finally did that we booked a lavish resort in Cabo which I've never been to never been to Cabo and we just booked this all-inclusive baller resort like spent the money on it like really was like let's run it up and do this right if we're gonna do a vacation let's do it right and I've I've had this just string of just so much travel and so much like I've been going to the like I think it was from September end of September through end of October I was just bouncing around from the east coast to the west coast like every week dude it was crazy and so we planned the vacation to be basically when the craziness was over that's when we take a vacation and the place is called LeBlanc if you want to look it up um and it was dude it, it the whole all-inclusive thing I'm still I can't believe the all-inclusive thing it was like wait it's all I like couldn't wrap my head around the like oh it's just we can just eat as much as we want and it's for free like what's the catch is this a timeshare thing like are we gonna get a bill at the end of the thing for like eight grand like how is this gonna work and it, it was like it was exactly what I thought it could be we had the most lavish most beautiful experience allegedly not allegedly uh, basically just for free it was an unbelievable trip dude this place was paradise we were in this bubble of just paradise we didn't leave the resort the resort had these beautiful pools um ocean view outside the balcony ocean view steps to the beach we woke up you go from the pool you can take three steps down now you're on the beach on this private beach with like no one there the ocean's right there it was so beautiful that i almost didn't even know what to do you ever see something so beautiful like the ocean and you're just like uh like what do i am i am i enjoying this enough 
Like, is this, I'm just looking at it and, and really soaking it in. I'm like, all right, what do I do? <laughs> like, how is this, am I doing it right? It was just so stunning. And the, they had probably about six or seven restaurants in the resort. And they were all like fancy restaurants. Like I'm talking like some fine dining type shit. And, you know, when all, with an all-inclusive resort, it's like you're you're going to eat the food and you're going to enjoy the food no matter what it is. It's like if the food's pretty good, you're like, hey, all right, it's pretty good, but it's also free, so fuck it. The food was, I'm not exaggerating, some of the best food we've ever eaten. Dude, it was unreal. Everywhere, every restaurant. This it was seafood sushi. It was like Italian food. It was uh, it was so good. It was like laughable. It was so good that the last two nights we had two dinners. We pulled up at six p.m., ate dinner, went back to the room, took a nap, <laughs> woke up, and went to another dinner at nine thirty. We weren't even hungry. We were just like, I want my mouth to be tasting these things as much as possible. It was unreal. The views were amazing. It, it, the weather was heaven. It was like 79 degrees and sunny every day. Do we had a butler? You heard that right. We had a butler, which sounds a lot crazier than it is. It was really just a guy who was like a personal concierge who was like, hey, whatever you need, let me know and I got you. Like text the WhatsApp for whatever you need and I got you. For example, like Kaylee needed like razors or something like that. It was like coming right up and he made it happen. He was so, dude, our butler, shout out. His name was Isaac, as if he's going to ever fucking... Who am I shouting out? Some fucking guy who lives in Mexico. Um, dude, he was the coolest guy. We we he gave us the initial like tour. We we checked in and he was like explaining like what he does. He's like, I am your butler, and he said he said, Do you know Batman? I am Alfred, and it was like, Whoa, dude, it's sick. <laughs> It was an amazing trip. I'm actually posting pictures from the trip uh, today on my Instagram, so I'm not going to put any here. You can just go to my Instagram to see some highlights. Um, it was just a, we do we brought a disposable camera, which is the move, by the way. We got the pictures developed, and it was so cool. They, the look of them is beautiful. It looks like they're on just shot on film. It was just so cool, and it's funny when you when you take a picture on a disposable camera, you're like you don't. You're not like, <laughs> you can't like ch- check it out if it's good. You just give the camera to someone and they take it and you're like, all right, hopefully we don't look ugly as shit. But man, it was uh, it was a really good lesson in just like, hey man, take a vacation. Take a vacation, unplug. And I always told myself, I was like, I don't want to take a vacation because I want to feel like I earned it. I never felt like I was at a place in my life or my career that I earned a vacation. Um, and now at this point, of my life, I'm like, I have earned it. Let's go. And I'm going to do it again. We will be back at that place. So come back from vacation. And then um, a couple of days later, I head right to Cleveland. Uh, I play this club called Hilarities, which is another, I mentioned about Denver. It's known as one of the best clubs in the country. And that's like the club you play in Cleveland. And I did it um, last year. I did it. I did like a Thursday. And you know, now I'm on the return. I'm on the second kind of second go around to different cities. And I, and, and in terms of the offers we were weighing, I think they offered, it was like, there was like a Wednesday or a Thursday and also a Sunday, which is the typically at the bigger clubs. That's kind of what I get offered. And then also they offered a Friday late show. So it was like a Friday nine 30 only, which I've never heard of really. Usually it's like, if you're doing the weekend, you're just doing the weekend, you're doing four or five shows. But they had this just Friday late option, and it was uh, Billy Gardell, that dude from from TV, from from the TV box. He was doing like only Friday early, and then both shows Saturday. And so I had this open show, and I was like, and it lined up where I was doing Philly on a Sunday, and I can do it that on that Friday with a day off in between. And I was kind of like, yeah, dude, Friday late, that's sick. Let's do it. So that was an easy decision to make for me. So I did a Friday late Cleveland day off Philly on Sunday. The day off is strange. That's never anything I've done before. And I'll get into that, kind of what that was like. But that was what I went with, the Friday late. And even though it was a Friday late show, I still wanted to get there a day early. Um, because a Cleveland, you can't get to nonstop. From LA, you cannot get you cannot get to Cleveland nonstop. So it takes like seven hours to get there. So day of, I didn't want to risk flight delays and miss the show. Because if I miss the show, now I have... 
Friday f- is messed up, then Saturday I have a day off, and then Sunday. So basically I'm taking four days to do one show in Philly. So I did day before. The day before, I did, my, my route was LA, and I'll explain why I'm explaining the flight route in a second. <laughs> I do LA to Phoenix, Phoenix to Cleveland on Thursday. And LA flight is delayed, so now the connection time is tight. It's a real tight connection. And not only was it a tight connection, but it was also the flight from Phoenix to Cleveland, that was the only flight that day or night. That was it. So if I miss that, your boy's sleeping in Phoenix. This is why I fly the day before, because sure enough, we were kept getting delayed. We were chilling on the runway, whatever. Your boy missed the connection, and I was stranded in Phoenix. And again, I'm like, this is why I do this. So I'm stranded in Phoenix. The one I was rebooked on, dude, it was insane. They rebooked me on a flight that leaves that night a red eye, okay? Go with me on this. It leaves Phoenix at like midnight, goes to JFK in New York, which is past Cleveland, lands at 6.30 a.m. Friday morning, and then I take a flight from JFK to Cleveland, and I land at 10 a.m., and then I pass away from exhaustion. And so I saw that, and I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to do that, so let's find a different option. And shout out to the lady at American Airlines. She gave me, like, a great, she was like, how about this? She, like, was creative she was like how about this i can send you to dallas right now you get to dallas you stay overnight here's a hotel voucher then you catch a 9 a.m flight that gets into cleveland at noon and i was like i did the math in my head it was like the 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 gif or the meme of the equation running by me i was like uh yeah let's do that the only other option i saw was other than the the insane jfk thing was a was like a thing that gets me in at like three o'clock or whatever anyways so i ended up doing that so i went took a flight from phoenix to dallas again i don't want to be in either of these places i was last row aisle from phoenix to dallas which is so funny because it's like if you're last row it's like you the plane lands and you're like okay this means nothing to me i gotta sit here for another hour while people get off the plane so i basically was just it's like a layover it's like a, it's like a short layover. Finally get to Dallas and I, I do the hotel thing and I'm in the hotel and I'm, I'm at, I really am just like, who cares? I think some people are like very rattled by these types of things, but I'm just like, okay, what am I going to do? Get pissed about it? Who, then what? I still got to like do this whole thing. And I'm so glad to do the, the JFK flight thing. Can you imagine flying past the city you need to get to? And then going back, if I was on that flight, I'd be like, bro, hey, let me off here. Give me a parachute. I'll fucking parachute down to Cleveland. Let me out on the way. Finally get to Cleveland. Friday morning. The main downside was I was just more tired. Because if I get to Cleveland a Thursday, I'm able to actually like get a regular night's sleep, wake up when we want to. But I had to like wake up and catch a 9 a.m. flight in Dallas. So it was like so tired already at the start of the trip. Nolan Culver, my best buddy and opener, he got there a night before, as I was supposed to, so he was just in the Airbnb alone, which is funny, and I get there, and he's already, you know, he's ready to rock, we go get coffee, it's very fun, and I just want to give you a, a glimpse of what it's like to be friends as comedians, so I get there, and he was explaining, I was like, oh, how was the night, and he was like, oh, it was good, he was like, I, you know, I, I, I slept like shit, though, it was like the, the memory foam mattress, it was like too good, it was like, hey, like, like, remember me less so I can actually get comfortable. And we were laughing about it, and I was immediately like, oh, that's a bit. Dude, the, like, forget me more so I can be more comfortable in this bed. <laughs> like, like I, I get up to use the bathroom, and it's just, a, 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 just an outline of my body, like a chalk crime scene outline, and you just get back into your body. It's like, hey, forget me a little bit. It was so funny because it's like as friends, we are like, oh, wait, whoop, 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 whoop. that's a bit, that's a bit, that's funny, write that down. So now we riffed a whole thing about <laughs> about the mattresses and he said, he was like, dude, it's like the it's like the 9-11 of mattresses, it never forgets. And then I was like, and then I was like, yeah, you can only get it in uh, two twin sizes. I mean, come on, that's two friends writing bits right there. 
And I know it's an offensive joke. I know that. But, I mean, at least shout out to the writing, huh? So that's Nolan's joke. That's not me. That'll be him. I personally probably wouldn't do a 9-11 joke in my act because it's just not my style. Maybe I would. I don't really know. Y'all know I'm joking. But anyways, that's just a glimpse of, like, friends as comedians. Uh, and so in terms of the show in Cleveland, dude, t- ticket sales were, like, got nervous. I'm getting nervous because I'm being offensive. Um, anyways, so ticket sales. Dude, uh, uh, ticket sales were, like, were really good in Cleveland. I didn't know what to expect because I remember last year they were, like, okay. Like, I, I think I sold, like, 100 tickets, and then they gave away, like, 50 free tickets. It was, like, not great. But this one, dude, it was, like, on th- the day before the show, it was at, like, 2.15. Club seats, 3.50. Big club. There's, like, a balcony and shit. But 2.15, I was, like, whoa. That's a significant... It jumped, like, crazy. And I was, like, oh, my God. Okay. And then prior to that, I got the Philly counts, and that was at like 205. And I was like, dude, like, hey, this is going pretty well, huh? It's such a cool feeling to be like, okay, both of my shows on this trip are over 200 tickets already. Like, okay, where's the stress? I get to just enjoy this. Okay. And this really is one of the best clubs. It's it's the manager, Sam, is just like one of the coolest, just the coolest guys and um, and some of the best food. It's like one of those places that has like amazing food. It's like attached to like a restaurant. So I got a great food, great vibe. It's cool when you like come back to a city with like a cool club manager because like you know them and you feel like, I don't know, it's like, it's like, come, it's like seeing an old friend. And it's one of my favorite parts of the business is getting to kind of be friends with these people. It's it's like you're a it's like you're an athlete and you start to know the managers of the club of the of the teams. It's really um it's really nice. And dude, the crowd was um was like f- fantastic. Before the show, they said there's about 250 tickets sold, which again is like holy shit. This is also on a Friday late show. That is typically the hardest. If you're doing a weekend, that is the hardest time to sell tickets at the Friday late show and I'm at 250. It was amazing. And the crowd was just fantastic. It was one of the best I've felt that a crowd has handled my jokes and my material. Cuz crowds typically love the crowd work, right? That's kind of what they're going there at least cuz that's how they know me. And but the the material that I'm I'm still working on for the special, it's like or at least just running it and, and, you know, getting super, super, super comfortable with it. It's like they were so locked into that. And I felt like they loved the jokes. And in my mind, I'm like, dude, if they love the jokes, then they're going to, it's like the crowd work. I know they're going to love. But the, if you're into the jokes, we're cooking. And it was one of those crowds. Just felt very connected to this crowd. I felt very sharp. It was just a really good vibe and a good feeling. Even people that were yelling stuff out was like hilarious. And we had a fun thing going on with people yelling stuff out it was just i just love the crowd and and i did like a really long set i think i did almost an hour which i, t- I typically don't do um because i was just having so much fun up there man I, I i could have been up there for longer it was just it was a really really good vibe i had one uh one moment with these with these two dudes in the front and it was from a clip i posted this last week um, about how the guy had the pet peeves about uh, turning all the lights on or keeping the lights on. And I had a whole, whole clip about that. I was like, what are you, a moth? Like, what do you need so many lights for? Dude, there was so much more to that clip that I just can't post. It sucks. Dude, the, guy, the guys met because one of the guys worked at an HIV testing facility and his now husband was a guy who came in to get tested. And it was such an interesting and unique story. And I made jokes about it. Nothing disrespectful, but I'm like making jokes about test results and sex safety and all this stuff. And it was just like a really, really funny thing in the moment. But then I watched it back in like the edit and I'm like, dude, I can I just can't post this. It's just too risky, especially with how many gay fans I have. I was like, I don't want to risk offending anybody for this thing. I was like, ah, for, forget it. It's fine. I'll just have the, the lights parts funny enough. And so... Just a little behind the scenes there. There was some other stuff in there that was so good. And who knows? Maybe it'll come out at some point. Um, and I was just in such a good vibe, man. It was like after the show, Sam, the manager, like handed me my my check and my kind of breakdown of all the numbers. And and he was like, he was like, yo, he was like two seventy. He was like two seventy. And it's like the joy in his face was like so meaningful to me. Like he was genuinely excited and proud and pumped 
that I of, of how I did. And there's been times in touring that I've it can be so stressful and so much anxiety and so much just like there's been moments where I'm like, dude, what's the fun part? Like what's the, you know, being on stage can be stressful because I'm like, Oh, I hope this goes well. Hope I can find something funny with this moment. Oh, was it funny? Hopefully it was. And I was like, Oh, this is the fun part. I just had a killer show, sold a bunch of tickets and the managers stoked. It's like, okay, that's the fun part. Got it. That's it. Enjoy that. Lean into that, which is what I did. It was really fulfilling. And across the street from our Airbnb, dude, there was a golf simulator thing. One of those golf where you hit the ball into the screen and then it animates where the ball would go. And dude, they're open to like 1 a.m. And we went and played a golf game at midnight for 30 minutes. And it was so fun. We we were like little kids. We, we could have been there for 12 hours. I'm not even good at golf. And I was like, this is the most fun thing I've ever done. We were having some drinks. We were like, huh. We literally had 30 minutes. So we were like, huh. It was such a fun time that I was almost like, you guys are closing, but I want to stay so bad that like, call, call the police. I will get a ticket for trespassing. You guys can leave. I'll close it down. We're having so much fun. Call the police. Uh, We're not leaving. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'll take the fall. It was, dude, the vibe was just so good, man. Um, So shout out to Cleveland. Shout out to just, man, what a a, a night, man. Hilarities. What an amazing club. What an amazing experience. Um, And then the, so then we go into the day off. Now, I have a day off Saturday. I do Philly on Sunday. Here's where I really messed up. Dude, I forgot to book the Philly Airbnb for two nights. I booked it for the one night that I'm there. So now, there's a gap in between with no Airbnb. So I had to book a third Airbnb. So we had to check into another Airbnb on the day off for one night, wake up, check out of that one, walk down the street, check into another Airbnb, and then settle in, and then check out the next day to leave. It was so dumb because I never have a day off. I'm like, when would would I ever be trained in in how to do that? I'm doing everything myself. I don't have a travel agent. Fully messed up. Fully messed up. Philly messed up. Philly messed up. I did um, Helium Comedy Club in Philly, which is, again, no, I'm not exaggerating. That is known as one of the best clubs in the country. Like these are these are like a top five clubs. It's like Denver Comedy Works, Hilarities Cleveland, Philly Helium, uh, um, Comedy on State in Madison, and like DC Improv. Those are like the five kind of known as like the best clubs in the country. And I was able to do like I was able to do two in one trip. The the club seats uh, two fifty, so it's smaller. And again, a, a couple of days before the show, I was at two two like two oh five or something. So at that point, I was pretty confident it was going to sell out. I did it on a Sunday, which I don't love doing shows on Sundays. I think the crowd gets kind of sleepy, and the vibe is just not as rocking and rolling. You know, everyone has like the Monday scaries, I feel like. And not to mention football is in full swing. So you go to these places that like, you know, places like Buffalo or whatever. I'm like, bro, the Bills, that's like all they have. No offense. So it's like, if you're playing on a Sunday, it's like no one's going to come out. And so, same thing with, with with Philly. I'm like, dude, they love the Eagles. They're obsessed with the Eagles. It's like, if there's an Eagles game going on, ain't nobody going out that night. People are locked into football. And I just, pure luck, I, I the Eagles played that Thursday. Like, the one time of the year they play on a Thursday was the week I was there. Like, thank you, universe. Truly. Because I get to the club, and the manager, the manager's like, yeah, like... Dude, we we are always so slow on Sundays. No one goes out in Philly on a Sunday with football. He was like, if we ever if we break 150 tickets, I'm like, I can't believe it. So the fact that I was where I was at, they were like, yo, cool, thank you. And I had this very interesting thing happen where, like I said before, I was I had these expectations for what was going to happen for the show. It was at you know 205. 
and the club seat's 250 and I got that that was you know three four days out and to me you see the biggest jump in the last two days like Cleveland in two days I jumped up 60 tickets in two days or not even like a day like a day and a half bro I'm not even joking it's like 60 tickets in like a day and a half so when I got the thing for Philly I was like oh well looks like it's gonna sell out and that's great and I get to the day of the show and it's still not sold out and I got the ticket counts and I was at 223 and I was like uh what how this is the only city that I actually wasn't running ads for, which I've run ads for every show, and I didn't run ads for the show because I was like, ticket sales are good. It's looking like it's going to sell out, so I'm not going to spend money on advertising. And I guess that maybe made a difference because it was just it just didn't get there. And now I have this weird emotion before the show where I'm like, I'm kind of disappointed. I'm I've sold over like let's say i've sold like 230 tickets in a city on a fucking sunday and i'm feeling disappointed because i set myself up for these expectations of a sellout and now it's looking like i may not get there and so the first emotion is just i i set myself up for this like weird disappointment and then the next emotion also was was i was i was beating myself up for feeling disappointed and sad Instead of feeling grateful and excited that I sold over two over two hundred tickets in a city to see me, that's been the dream, and I'm doing it, and I'm feeling sad. So now I had this weird mix of emotions where I was sad, but I was also beating myself up because I was feeling sad. I was like, "Man, this is not the vibe I want to be in for this show." And and f- thank God I'm with an amazing woman like Kaylee because she randomly just sent me a video. And obviously I was talking to her about it and she was talking me through it. She was just, again, being like, you know, what's the self-compassionate part you say, you know? And I was like, well, it's the part that says, it's amazing that you did this, right? She's like, that's the part you should listen to. And I was like, I know, man, it's just so hard right now. And she sent me a video of Oso and she had taken the cover off of her couch to, to wash it. And he was lying on the couch cover without a cover on it. And she sent me a video of him sleeping on this thing. And I'm going to show you right here. And I saw the video and it put such a smile on my face that it just made all the negative feelings go away. And I was like, you know what? Life's good. Let's go have a fun show. And sure enough, I ended up selling uh, 245 tickets. So I was five short. I'll explain more after in a second. So the club, again, has a big hype, big expectation for this club. And sure enough, I felt it like immediately. I walked out and like I felt the love. This this club is like a low ceilings basement type club, right? Like you really feel the laughs. It's how it should be. It's how comedy should be. I felt so much love when I walked out there. Like the applause, the cheering. It was like, whoa, dude, it was amazing. I don't take any of those moments for granted. But you felt it even more because it was it – was, so packed in and tight and close you just it, it's you you physically felt it and dude the show was like the show was killer the show was like awesome i remember actively being on stage after a couple of minutes and i was like oh i want to like shoot a special here at some point that's how good the room was i don't think i've ever really thought that before i think i probably thought that in sacramento which is why i'm filming my special there the only thing with the show was was um I had I had these these various crowd moments as I do and, and I felt like I never had that like big moment that I yearn for every show like that banger moment I was getting gifts like a guy I worked with like f- was in pharmaceuticals for animals for a zoo he said he gave Xanax to a hippo there was a cat named Vagina I'm talking gifts and for whatever reason I just didn't have the right line or the right timing to really slam it home. Every moment was good. Everything was like funny and worked great. But again, I didn't feel like I had that like big crushing moment that I really, really want to the point of in during the show and the show's going like great. Don't get me wrong. 
you're you're ta- you're hearing it from me, the most self critical person ever. The show's going great, but at a certain point, I was like, I knew I didn't have that moment, so I was like, bro, I gotta get, I gotta really get, I really want my big moment. And eventually, I was just like, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> I just opened it up for the people, and I've never done this before, and I've heard of people doing this. I've actually heard of and probably like not all of them but maybe some 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 lesser experienced comics maybe some like internet youtube people or tiktok people that don't really do stand up and they have like 15 minutes they'll do like 15 minutes and they'll just do like a Q&A for the rest of the show and you see their crowd work clips and it's it's a lot of it's from like this Q&A and i've heard that and at first i was like no way i'm not doing that i'm a real artist i can i can do it without that but then the more i thought about it i was like yeah but that's actually kind of a fun idea is to kind of like have a guaranteed interesting crowd moment from someone else. Maybe they say some wild shit. They ask you a weird question. It's like, so I did it. And sure enough, it was actually really fun. I had some funny questions and it made me want to do it more. So like, like people asked like, you know, why do you think you have so many gay fans? Uh, People asked, uh, what's your, what's your least favorite city? It was just like a fun vibe. And I was like, I don't know, maybe I'll start doing this a little bit. And I did, I ended up doing my longest, I think the longest set I've ever done. I did like an hour and three minutes, which I usually do like 52, an hour and three minutes. I think with the Q&A, it extended the show a little bit and and, and I didn't feel like any, I was losing anyone. They were still rocking with me. So that was a really interesting moment and I was just, I I, I felt really good getting off the show um, and the cool, man, the coolest, it was such a great trip, man. Every aspect of the trip was great. Here's, what I'll end with it was the way some some comedy club deals work is basically you get a certain percentage of the ticket sales right and then if you sell out the show you get an increased percentage and that's kind of an incentive for you to try to sell out the show right same thing for this club so it was like if I sell a certain amount of tickets I get this percent if I sell it out I get this and I and so the guy handed me the numbers and it was 245 so I was five short and I was like oh kind of stoked because I was like, oh shit, like I kind of did it, right? All that the weird feelings I had before, I was kind of like, well shit, there was a bunch of walk-ups and I kind of did it. But I was kind of like, oh, I was so close. And the manager was like, yeah, so I talked to our booker and we're gonna go ahead and give you the sellout deal. And that meant so much to me. I've just had experiences where clubs will kind of be like oh we actually you know added this expense or maybe it's like I'll make less money than I thought but the fact that they were like no let's hook you up because you basically sold it out and I remember telling the manager I was like I was like oh man like I do you think I I don't really want to claim that I sold it out though because I technically didn't I was like do you think I can and he was like I think you should I think you get to say you sold it out because you basically did and they paid me as if I sold it out so I was like okay I'm going to say I sold it out, and I did. And I'm only admitting the real long version of the truth to you guys because I'm keeping it, a, keeping it a buck. It was just such a great feeling. I felt so spoiled on this trip, just dealing with such an amazing clubs and such amazing experiences. Hang with Nolan's always the best. Um, go follow him. His Instagram's blowing up. It's it's so cool to see, man. He does these these videos in the woods of him falling down, giving like self-help uh pointers and things and it's so funny because now for the first time in philly two people in line actually recognized him from his instagram and it made me so happy because i've been with him through him trying to figure out how to kind of crack the algorithm code and what content to put out and like he's doing it and it's working like legitimately working like bro he gets the most random celebrity follows he has like alanis morissette follows him uh tom DeLong, the guy from blink 182 follows him now and he messed and they messaged back and forth when we were there it's just so cool to see one of your best friends get legitimate success. Like one of the guys working at the Philly club also recognized him, who's a bartender, and they took a picture together. Part of me was like, hey man, it's my show. He's the opener. But I was also like so excited. I was like, dude, look at Nolan, bro, taking pictures with fans? That's my dog right there. Woof. And then I head home. I head ho- I head home. Then I head home. Then <laughs> I went home. <laughs> I took I went from Philly to Chicago, Chicago to LA. On this whole trip, I ended up taking six flights because we also flew from Cleveland to Philly. I took six flights in a few days and my God, I may as well be a pilot. Your boy was exhausted. 
I'm still kind of tired from getting back. I got back on Monday, still tired. Anyways, super thankful for you guys if you came out to that show. Um, I hope you enjoyed the kind of the behind the scenes look of everything. I met actually, I remember meeting a podcast fan in Philly who was like, I can't wait to hear about what you actually thought about the show and your feelings of it. So I like to think that and shout out to him. And I like to, I like to think that people are excited to hear my, the, the, the real scoop. So that's the pod. Um, again, coming up, we have the, we have the Denver Phoenix shows. Uh, so excited for those. I probably won't put out a podcast until after those shows. Um, so it'll be a couple weeks probably, but again, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I'm putting up more YouTube clips. Um, by the way, in the time I'm not doing podcasts where I'm going to do like full uncut versions of, of, of clips that I think people have really wanted to, uh, really wanted to see. And so I'm going to start, um, I'm going to start upl- uploading those. So there's a couple up now or should be a one up now. I'm going to upload one every week. So hopefully you enjoy that and come see me in Denver, Phoenix, Nashville, Minneapolis. I have a bunch of more dates that are up on my website now columbus cincinnati uh uh, uh, uh toronto salt lake city and i'm announcing more cities i'm also um just for the, uh, again for you guys the the tickets for sacramento for my special taping they are up now uh punchline sacramento april 4th and 5th friday saturday the filming is going to be on saturday night both shows so those tickets are up um that goes for anyone in the bay area would love for you to come out to those shows um i won't be doing any sort of bay area shows until after that in the summer so um and it'll be by the time i get there it'll be a totally new set so come see the special and come out to some shows great to see you guys great to be with you and um take care of yourselves and i'll see you in a couple weeks bye